What's up, music fans of the internet? I'm Derek. And I'm Kevin. And we're last week's album. We're bringing you two opinions on the best new music. And this week, we're talking about Hi Honey by Low Cut Connie. And we're asking the question, does Low Cut Connie make the cut with Hi Honey? Uh, but before we go any further, we're going to start things off like we always do, drinking a beer. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, everyone at home. Cheers, Derek, Connie. Honey and everyone else at home. Yes. All right. So Low Cut Connie um, originated as the brainchild of Adam Weiner, who's a pianist from New Jersey, and Dan Finnamore, a uh, drummer and guitarist from Birmingham, uh, England. And uh, the story goes that they, uh, by chance, were stuck on a freight elevator together for four hours. And upon uh, exiting or being saved, I'm not sure how that part of the story goes. Um, they had this idea to uh, create a band uh, that's that revisits uh, classic rock, rock and roll sounds. Uh, this is their third LP, their first albums, uh, 2010's Get Out the Lotion and 2012's Call Me Sylvia were uh, uh, critically acc uh, acclaimed, uh, although they, they weren't really necessarily breakthroughs. Um, and this album features two new members, uh, James Everhart and Will Donnelly. Um, and so without further ado, let's, uh, talk about what Hi Honey sounds like. Kevin, why don't you start us off? Sure. Uh, I think Hi Honey sounds like Jerry Lee Lewis jamming with the Allman Brothers. What do you think, Terry? I like that. Uh, I think Hi Honey sounds like a, a friendly reintroduction to classic rock, rock and roll sounds with witty contemporary lyrics. That's so I like the two bands uh, or individuals you, you reference there. All right, so sounds a lot, uh, excuse me, key tracks. Uh, Kevin, what did you pick? I'm going with track number 11, which is called The Royal Screw. What about you? All right. Well, I'm going with Danny's Out of Money, which is uh, track eight. Um, and so I'll start us off. Da uh, Danny's Out of Money opens to Fading Applause, a Temptations-esque bass guitar hook, uh, which uh, ends quickly and settles into a piano guitar hook over tapping drumsticks accented by organs. Uh, this really kind of builds towards the end with a horn section. Uh, there's a weeping guitar solo around the three-minute mark, and a gospel choir enters, uh, echoing the chorus uh, during the final buildup, uh, which is great in telling the story of Danny, who has really hit rock bottom. Uh, but more importantly, this has a negative impact on the band, which is terrible. Um, it, it, it really uh, tells an interesting story here at, at one point. Um, they say he's going to have to sell his kidney if we don't get a record deal by the end of June. Um, so that's that's pretty bad. Um, but it gets worse. He thinks he's a pretty good lover. Well, yeah, he's going to have to be tonight. Boys and girls want some after show delight. <laughs> um, and the chorus, again, really, you know, stressing the, you know, the really important part, you, you know, downside here. Danny is out of money. Danny needs a helping hand. Danny's out of money, breaking up the band. So um, I think here they just really, you know, capture this classic rock and roll sound and really tell a, a very humorous story at the same time. So really enjoyed this one. Uh, Kevin, why don't you tell us about the Royal Screw? Uh, sure. Uh, track number 11, as you mentioned, called the Royal Screw, Derek. Uh, it comes in with this barrel roll drum intro. There's some pop, jazz, trumpet hooks. There's rocky piano, scuzzy guitars. These sort of rockabilly pop verses uh, juxtaposed against more doo-wop-y uh, choruses. And there's this bouncy guitar and piano dual solo or solos. I'm not sure what to call it. And a uh, really good line. He says, you've been giving me the royal screw. Now I'm giving it back to you. So it's definitely a kiss off of a track, but a very feel-good one nonetheless. So definitely check out the Royal Screw. Let's see what you think of it. Uh, Kevin, I think when two instruments like play like solos together, that might be called a duet. Yeah, but they're both soloing on their own. But I see um, You know, sometimes the Royal Screw can kind of be like that too. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Touche. All right. Without further ado, best lyric 
<laughs> Kevin, what did you have? Uh, I'm going with a line from Shake It Little Tina, which is track number two, the first, I guess, real track on the album. The first one's about a minute long intro. But they say, when I'm by myself, I turn into someone else. I pull down my pants, put on my heels, and dance. And the song is basically about dancing like Tina Turner when you're all alone, um, jamming out at home. And I just really like it. Less than two minutes into the album, they hit you with their sort of quirky, lowbrow style. And just shows you right off the bat how little these guys care about being cool and how much they care about having fun. So there's a lot of lyrics like that throughout the album. Um, which one did you like, Derek? Uh, you know, kind of similar to that. This one comes from a song called Back in School. And he says, I ain't no stranger, stranger, but I ain't your boyfriend. I ain't no stranger, stranger to the way she dance. And I feel like if we had like uh, canned audience sounds right now, it'd be like, ooh. Um, and I feel like that, would, <laughs> that sound might also be appropriate on the track here. Um, uh, I just, again, kind of their playful nature, and uh, I just really dug that one. Um, all right, so that brings us to overall rating and answering the question, does Low Cut Connie make the cut with High Honey? Uh, Kevin, why don't you start us off? Uh, sure. I will start with answering the question, uh, do they make the cut? Um, I think so. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in an age when a lot of bands take them sound, themselves and their sounds very seriously, these guys remind us that sometimes it's really just about having a ball and that's all you need. And uh, with their music, they do that. It's a really fun record. It's perfect for a pool day or a house party. They stick to these classic um, rock and roll sounds, but also give them some fresh energy. And about midway through, there's three or four tracks that sort of start into this interesting territory of mixing rockabilly with southern classic rock, which I found really interesting and really strong and love to hear more of. Uh, lyrically and musically, there's not a whole lot of ingenuity, but that's not really what these guys are about anyway. They're just about good old um, fashion fun, and they kill it at that. So I'm giving this one a strong three out of five. What do you think, Derek? Uh, Kevin, I totally agree with you. I definitely think they make the cut here. Uh, you know, the playfulness of the lyrics really jumped out to me. Um, I think, uh, you know, in Shake It, Little Tina, which was, uh, you, you know, the first kind of real song, I guess, if you will, um, he, he says immediately, I'm a modern dude. I order modern food. And I'm like, yeah, all right, that's cool. Um, and it's fun the whole way through. Um, yeah, I think they do, you know, reimagine these sounds in, in a very fresh way. Um, it's fun the whole way through. Uh, my only complaint, you know, and, and maybe one downside is, is maybe the the low fineness. Uh, a lot of times, surrounding the vocals made it difficult to decipher some of the lyrics, which is fun. But I think that might also, uh, you know, hinder from becoming the breakthrough success they want. But you know what? I don't think that matters because I think they're gonna have fun anyway. And I'm giving this a fun four out of five. Um, so that makes a combined seven out of ten for High Honey by Low Cut Connie, so definitely go check this out and play it this summer. And don't forget, uh, don't forget to subscribe to last week's album where, where we bring you two opinions on the best new music. Uh, and as always, I'm Derek. I'm Kevin. Cheers. <laughs>